In this video I will teach you how to handle schema drift with files using notebooks when writing data from files to lakehouse tables. This is a video you definitely want to watch if you want to expand your data engineering skills and knowledge. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Marxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Marxed Fabric data engineering and today we are covering handling file schema drift with notebooks. If you'd like to check out other videos in this series, the link to the playlist can be found in the description. In data engineering it is quite typical that file schemas tend to change. Typically over time new fields are added to the source files that are coming in or in some cases fields can be removed from the source files. This kind of schema drifts can cause issues with your data pipelines if you are not prepared to handle them in advance. There are many different approaches and school of thought that can be applied to this common issue. In the following tutorial I will go through some of the typical options that are being used to handle this issue and discuss their strengths and weaknesses. Also the notebook and the files that I will be using in the tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description. But now without further ado let's go to fabric. Let's start from my fabric lake house where I have created this new folder called fabric DE series 35 and in that folder I have two subfolders config folder and a source folder. In the source folder I have these three files person1, person2, person3.json files and in the config folder I have this person config.json file. But we will come back to this config file later on this video, so I'm not going to go through this file right now. But in these three JSON files I have some data, but there are some differences in these files. And I will show you these files in my notepad. Here we can see the person1 file. As we can see we have three properties or columns here in this file. We have id, name and age. And in the person2 file we have added this gender property to the file. So we have four properties instead of three that we have in the first file. And in the third file we have id, name and gender. So basically we have removed the age age property from the third file. And now we can use these three files to demonstrate how we can handle this changing schema in our data pipelines. Also keep in mind that the concepts that I will cover shortly can be applied to different types of files as well. It doesn't have to be a JSON file. I'm just using JSON here because I like the data format and I think it is very common nowadays and every data engineer should know how to handle JSON files. And here I have a notebook that I have attached to that same lake house that I just showed to you. And we can see those same folders here that I just showed to you. And now we can start running this notebook. And in this first cell I just have some preparations for this notebook and I'm defining the source path prefix that is the Spark API file path to the source folder that can be found by clicking these three dots here and copying relative path for Spark. And by clicking that we would be able to get that same path that I have there as we can see. And then we have this create schema if that doesn't exist. I have already created that schema but that will make sure that we create the schema if it's not already there. And then I have this uh, drop table statement that will clean up the situation and drop the table that we are going to use in this tutorial. But now let's run this first cell here and prepare our notebook for this tutorial. And now it is done. And in the second cell we are reading that person1 JSON file by using this Spark reader that will read that JSON file to a data frame and then we're displaying that data frame. Let's run this and we can see that we are able to read that person1 to a data frame. And here we can see that data that we had in that person1 file. So basically the same data that we had here but now in the data frame format. And next let's go to our third cell and here I'm just reading that same person one data and then I'm also writing it to this lakehouse table called person and I'm using the overwrite mode. So if we would have that table there we would just overwrite that with new data. And now let's run this and let's see that everything goes okay. And now it is running and should finish fairly fast. And now our command has executed and we can see that we managed to read that JSON data and write it to that lakehouse table and then read that data from the table. And we can see that the table looks exactly the same as the data frame that we had in that previous cell. So nothing magical happened here yet. And now in the fourth cell we are reading in that 
person two data where we had that extra column gender and now we're just reading that person two data to a data frame and displaying that and we can see that we get that same data that we have in that file but as you can see we have now one extra column there and next we are going to try to put this data to the same table with that previous person data and for that we have this fifth cell here so now we are reading in that person 2 data and then we are trying to write it to the same person table using now append method so we are not clearing the table and we are leaving the person 1 data there and we are just appending this person 2 data on top of that data and now let's try to do that and let's see what happens and we get this error message so let's see what went wrong here so basically we get this schema mismatch and we can see that our table table schema has only age id and name but our data schema that is coming in from that person too has also that gender so we throw this error message that we are not able to write that data to that table and this is a very common problem in a data engineering scenario when a new column is added to a source file and there are different ways how we can handle this situation and make sure that our data pipeline doesn't break down in this kind of a scenario. And as we can see, this error message already gives us some hints what to do here. It is recommending us to use this option merge schema and setting it to true, which would allow us to merge the schema of the incoming data with the existing data. And in this cell number six, we are going to do just that. And now I have modified the code that I had in the previous cell and added this option merge schema true to that spark writer when we are writing that to the lakehouse table and now we can run this code and let's see does it work and are we able to put that person 2 data to that same table and display that data and now we can see that everything went fine and we can see that now when we are displaying that person data from our lakehouse table we can see that we have there that gender column. Remember that these three rows here came from that person one file and we can see that we don't have the gender there because in the person one file we didn't have that gender property there so we don't have those values but we were able to add that gender column to the table using that merge schema option and using this merge schema option might seem very convenient but i want to discuss some issues that you could face when using it this way the problem of using this merge schema option this way is that if there would be for example a mistake in the source system and the file would fill up with just random columns that are not really needed and would have some random data that we are not interested in they would be automatically added to this delta table and possibly flood that with some data that is not really needed there but this is just something that you have to keep in mind when using this option and later on i will discuss some other ways how you could prevent that kind of situation from happening but now let's move forward with the tutorial and now we are reading in that person3.json file and displaying that data and remember now we removed that h column so we don't have that H column in this person 3, so we are missing one property when comparing this data to those previous person files that we had there. And now let's try to add that person 3 data to the same table with that person 1 and person 2 data without using that merge schema option. And let's see what will happen when we have a missing column and we are not using that merge scheme option there. And let's run this code and let's see what happens and we are going to display the data in that table and here we have that table and as we can see now we didn't need that merge schema option since missing columns are just fine when considering this append mode so it will only draw an error if you have some extra columns in your data but if you're missing some columns this append doesn't care about that and if we would add that merge schema option to this the result would be the same so nothing new would happen with this code by adding that merge schema there because it is able to automatically merge schemas without using that merge schema option when there are missing columns and not new columns next i want to discuss some ways how you can enforce the schema when you are reading those json files but before we do that i would like you to know that i spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you and that's why i would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more max fabric data engineering content it doesn't cost you anything and i would highly appreciate that 
Also, if you'd like to support the channel with a small donation, you can do so by using the Buy Me a Coffee link that can be found in the description. But now, let's continue with the video. And in this cell number 9, we are actually reading all of those person files at the same time using a wildcard. And now let's run this and let's see that we are able to read in all of those three files by using this wildcard in the file name. And let's run this and we can see that we were able to read in all of those files. And we can see that this already merged the schemas from those files when reading them. So in this data frame we have all the columns that we have in those files. And next I will show you how you can extract the schema from that data frame using this dot schema here. And by running this we are able to extract this PySpark schema out of those files. So this struct here basically describes the schema for that data frame. And we can actually use this schema when reading in those files. So we can define the schema in the notebook and tell that we have these columns in our file and these are the data types that we have here. And then we are passing that schema to our reader function to the schema option here. And when we are enforcing the schema and reading in that person one data, we are already getting that gender column to that data frame that comes as an output from this Spark reader. So it will be null, but it will be already present there. So now we are enforcing the schema when we are reading in the file. By using this schema enforcement, we are not getting some dynamically changing data frames to our notebook processing since we are already enforcing the schema when we are reading the actual data. And this has some benefits if we don't want to have some randomly changing data frames in our notebooks. And in this next example I'm just showing you that I'm commenting out that age and reading again that person one data and we are not going to have that age column in that data when we read that. And there we can see that now we have only the gender ID and name even though in the actual person one file we have ID name and age. And next I will show you how you can transform that PySpark struct schema to this JSON schema. And I will show you shortly why we are doing that. And doing that is very easy and we have just the dataframe.schema.json function here that will actually convert that schema to a JSON object. And let's run this and let's see how does it look. And here we have that same schema that we had there but in the JSON notation. And in this next cell I have that same JSON schema here that I just showed to you. And now we are going to enforce the schema by using this JSON schema here. But before we can use this we have to convert that back to a struct type by using this struct type from JSON and JSON loads and using that JSON schema in order us to get that PySpark schema that our reader is expecting to have. And I'm just printing out the schema here that we can see that I was able to convert this JSON schema back to that PySpark schema. And now let's run this and let's try to read in again that person one data. And here we can see that we managed to convert this JSON schema back to this PySpark schema. And here we had that data that we read in by enforcing that schema. And in the next cell I'm just going to drop our person table so we are able to write some fresh data to that table. So let's drop that table and now it is gone. And now we are going to come back to that configuration file that I showed to you in the beginning of this tutorial that can be found in this config folder in our lake house. And now I'm just reading in that configuration file using this file API path that can be found by clicking this button here, copy file API path. And I'm just going to print what we have in this configuration file. So here is the configuration file contents. It's a bit messy in this view. So I will show that configuration file in my notepad and tell you what I have there. And if this configuration files and the metadata driven approach is not familiar to you, I would check out the previous video in this series where I covered them. A link to that video can be found in the description. But yeah, here we have that configuration that we just read to our notebook. And in this configuration I have properties, the source file that tells the source file from which we are going to read the data. So I have a configuration here for every person file that I have been using in this tutorial. And then I'm telling to which 
which table I want to write the data and now I'm going to write all of the data to that same person table and then I'm telling that I want to use write mode append for every file there and then I have this schema property here and in this schema property I have actually that same JSON schema that I had here in the notebook but now I have them in this configuration and in this cell I'm reading in that configuration file and then I have this for loop here where I'm going to write the contents of those files one by one to that same person table in my lake house. And before I run this code, I want to point out a few things. So we are enforcing the schema here. So we are using that JSON schema and enforcing it when we are reading in those JSON files one by one. But we are also merging the schema when we are writing that data to the lakehouse tables. And this means that if we would have a new column in our raw JSON files, we would modify the schemas in the configuration and that way we would be able to add that new column to our lakehouse table. And this would grant us some more control over which columns are added. Because the incoming data when we are reading it defines which columns we have there and we are controlling that by using that schema option. And now let's run this code and let's see that everything works fine. And there it is running and should finish fairly quickly. And now it is already done. And in this last cell we can check out that table and see that is everything all right in that person table. And there we can see that we have all the person data there. So IDs from one to nine. And this is how you can handle schema drift with files when using notebooks in Maxed Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.